Hello, welcome to the sixth uh, session of uh, consumer choice theory. Uh, my name is Elias. So in this video, I'm going to present to you the consumer's budget. Now, we have looked at uh, the consumer's preferences and uh, were able to determine, we were able to determine what determines the consumer's choice. Now, in this video, we want to look at uh, the budget of the consumer so that we understand how the consumer allocates the budget uh, between or among different items that maximizes his or her utility. In doing so, we are going to look at the budget line and then present it. So let's look at the budget constraint. Now, in presenting the budget constraint, we use a budget line. And uh, it's this line that demarcates or gives a boundary between the affordable and the non-affordable bundle. So a consumer subject his or her preference to the income that he has given the prices of the preferred bundle. Now, given that we have the preference of the consumer, it is now in our best interest to know, given the price and the income, how many units the consumer will get to maximize the utility. Now, the consumer's budget line shows all the different combinations of the two goods that a consumer can purchase given his or her money or income and the prices of the two goods. So now, the consumer knows what he prefers. Given the two items, that's price and income, we should be able to determine how many units the consumer will get. So we will leave that for the next session. In this video, we will confine ourselves to just the illustration of the budget, uh, consumer's budget. So consumer, the consumer can afford to purchase a bundle if its cost is less than or equal to his or her income for that period. Now, what we are saying here formally is that uh, we have the price of X and uh, the price of good Y and the money income. Then we need to know how many units the consumer will get of X and how many units the consumer will get of Y. Now, when we have identified the units, when we do the mathematics here, the value we we'll get here must be less, the value we we'll get here must be less or equal to the actual income of the consumer. In other words, the total expenditure must be less or equal to the consumer's uh, income. With this, then, uh, we know that everything that we can buy and still remain with some change gives us the affordable bundle or the affordable uh, portion of our budget. Now, if the consumer decides to exhaust the entire income on uh, purchases of goods and services, it means that what we'll have is this part here, this inequality, will change to an equal sign. And presented, we'll have this equation here. So if from an inequality, we change to an equation to show that in this case then, the consumer should exhaust his entire income on buying good X and good Y. So now, given the two equations, the one with an inequality sign and this one with an equation, then we have what we call the consumer's budget constraint. So it is a constraint to the consumer that whatever he is buying, it should be, in the first case, it should be less or equal to the income. And this will identify how far the consumer can go in the purchase. So let's look at uh, the presentation of the budget line. So a budget constraint is the limit on the consumer's budget that a consumer can afford. On the vertical axis, we put uh, good Y. On the horizontal, we put good X. Now, good Y and good X can be anything that you can think of. It can be bread and butter. It can be shoes, clothes. It can be, it can be anything. So remember we said we use a two-dimensional graph to avoid ambiguities in our drawings. Otherwise, we can have a lot of items on the budget. And whatever we buy, they should be less or equal to our income. So to keep the analysis simple, we will assume a two-dimensional graph, or rather we'll assume two commodities, so that we only have X and Y. 
So now a budget line will be a straight line which is a downward sloping. The portion here below this line gives us the affordable bundle or the affordable portion of the budget line. So this, this region here. Okay. So let's uh, define this. So we have the budget constraint, which is uh, the price of X multiplied by X plus the price of Y multiplied by good Y. And this must be equal to the money income, meaning this is what we use to draw this line. So in other words, when drawing the line, we assume that the consumer will exhaust the entire income. Where the consumer will be depends on where he wants to consume on the line. Then to that, uh, we can make X the subject of the formula. And if we make X subject of the formula, it means that we will have this equation here. Now from this equation, what we have uh, on this part is our vertical intercept. I mean, sorry, the horizontal intercept, which comes here. Okay, so we have the horizontal intercept. And if we make Y subject of the formula, we have the vertical intercept, this one. Now, this graph, when we put Y on the vertical and the X on the horizontal, it means we are drawing, we've drawn this graph to depict this equation. And therefore, this part of the equation is uh, the slope of the budget line. Price of X divided by the price of Y along with the negative. Okay, so we have the slope of the budget line. So it comes from making Y the subject of the formula for the budget constraint. Okay, let's look at an example. Draw the budget line for a person with income of 1000 if the price of Y is 5 quarter and the price of X is 10 quarter. What is the slope of that budget line? So I'll give you one minute to try and draw that graph and then you compare what you will have drawn with what I'll present here. Okay, so now uh, let's start by doing the calculations and uh, see how we can draw the budget line. So budget constraint uh, from this information is uh, we have 10x plus 5y equal to 1000. Where this 10 is the price of x, this 5 is the price of y, and then the 1000 is the money income. From this, if we make y the subject of the formula, we will get this equation. That means from here, we will have uh, 5y is equal to 1000 Then this part, when it crosses the other side, it becomes negative. It goes to the other side, it becomes negative. So we'll have minus 10x. And from here, we divide through by 5. We divide through by 5, there we go, and then this will cancel, meaning y will be equal to 1000 divided by 5 minus 10 divided by 5. So if we simplify this equation, 1, 000, uh, 5 into 1000, we will have 200, and uh, 5 into 10, we will have a 2. So that equation becomes y is equal to 200 minus 2x. So if we make x zero, if we to find y intercept, if x is zero, then y will be 200. It means what we'll be plotting is zero, zero, comma 200. 
So we are using this method because this is a linear equation. And if we make y zero, it means what we'll be getting is uh, x will be a hundred. And so we are plotting 100 comma zero. So let's draw the graph here. So we have y on the vertical axis and uh, x on the horizontal axis. And then given this information we have, we can plot these two numbers, uh, values. So we have uh, zero here. So we have uh, 100, uh, 200, 200, and then 100. So this is 0, 200, which is the uh, vertical intercept, and uh, 100, 0, which is the horizontal intercept. Now from this, we need to also know what the slope of this budget line is. So we have uh, this equation. So the slope of this budget line is this part. When you differentiate, you get negative 2. So slope of the budget line is negative 2. Okay, so let's look at the changes in the price. Now, changes in prices of the goods changes the slope and one of the intercepts as well as uh, the position of the budget line. So in other words, it changes the slope and the position of the budget line. Now, if only the price of one good changes, holding income constant and the preferences constant, and the price of the other good also constant, it means that a decrease in price will tilt the budget line outward. Now, this means that uh, the consumer now has more purchasing power, which he or she can allocate to buy more goods. And if there is an increase in price, the budget line will tilt inward, indicating a reduction in the purchasing power and therefore the affordable bundle also uh, shrinks. Now, if prices of both goods change in the same direction, and uh, this, what this means is that a decrease in price will shift the budget line outward. So this, as opposed to a tilt, the, the entire budget line will shift outward. And if uh, there is an increase in the price, the budget line will shift inward. Now, don't worry about this, because I'm going to show you the presentation of uh, what has been uh, shown here. So I'll show you using the graph how the tilt happens and uh, how the shift happens. So let's uh, begin with the changes in the price. So suppose that only the price of good X changes, holding uh, income constant and the price of good uh, Y constant. Let's uh, put good Y on the vertical axis and good X on the horizontal axis. With this budget line, where we are assuming 12 as the intercept on the vertical and the 3 as the intercept on the horizontal, then we have a price of 2. Now, if the price increases, say to 6, quarter per unit, it means that the budget line will tilt inward. This is to indicate an increase in price, meaning the affordable bundle reduces. So the area below the line from the intercept 12 to 3 was indicating the affordable bundle. Every, this area below was the affordable bundle. But now that price has increased, the affordable bundle reduces uh, to the area below the line 12, 1. This one here. And if the price of commodity X reduces say to one quarter it means the budget line will tilt outward from this initial budget line to the other budget line so on this budget line we will notice that this is showing the reduction of price uh, to one quarter so there is uh, an increase or an expansion in the affordable bundle so the whole region here indicates the affordable bundle so, in conclusion, a reduction in price holding other factors constant tilts the budget line outward and uh, increases the affordable bundle. And uh, while the uh, increase in price tilts the budget line inwards and uh, reduces the affordable bundle. Let's look at changes in income. Now, changes in income of the consumer uh, changes the consumer's uh, inter, uh, budget intercept as well as uh, the position. So, in this case, the budget line, the entire budget line, will shift outward, but the slope will remain the same. 
what will change is the intercept of the budget line. So let's look at uh, the analysis. So if income changes, holding prices and the preferences constant, then a decrease in income will shift the budget line inward because the purchasing power has reduced and therefore the consumer will have less to spend on the goods. And if there is an increase in income, the budget line will sh would shift outwards to indicate an increase in the purchasing power and therefore uh, increasing the consumer's uh, affordable bundle. Now, the analysis here is uh, similar to the changes in prices. So if both prices change in the same direction at the same proportion, holding income constant, then the budget line will also shift. So a decrease in prices will shift the budget line outward, while an increase in prices will shift the budget line inwards. Let's do the graphical analysis. Suppose that income changes, holding prices and the preferences constant, then it means that uh, we have the initial budget line where we have uh, 12 on the vertical intercept as the vertical intercept and three as the horizontal intercept on good X. If income uh, reduces, the budget line will shift inward. So this will show that there is a reduction in the affordable bundle. So this part here is the unaffordable bundle, then the other region remaining here becomes the affordable bundle. If income increases, then the budget line will shift outward and therefore bundles that become affordable increase. So in summary, what we're saying is that an increase in income shifts the budget line outwards and therefore increases the affordable bundle, whereas the reduction in income shifts the budget line inwards and reduces the affordable bundle. So let's look at uh, some properties then of the budget line. That budget line is the boundary that separates affordable bundles from the non-affordable bundles. And the slope of the budget line is given by the ratio of the prices, price of X over price of Y, and we add the negative. In other words, it's the price of the good on the horizontal axis divided by the price of the good on the vertical axis. The x-intercept is given by the ratio of the income to the price of good x. And the y-intercept is given by the ratio of the income to the price of good y. Changes in income shift the budget line without changing its slope. In other words, changes in the income shifts the budget line, in a, changes the intercepts, but leaves the slope unchanged. Changes in the price of a good rotates the budget line. So if one price, one, a price of one good changes, holding uh, other factors constant, then it means we're going to have a tilt in the budget line. Changing prices and income by the same proportion has no effect on the budget line because both prices have changed and therefore income has also changed. It means budget line will not change. So if you reduce prices and, uh, and increase income, sorry, if you reduce prices and you reduce income by the same proportion, it means that the budget line will not change. Thank you very much for watching. Please see you in the next uh, video. If you have questions, uh, send me an email to muawelias at gmail.com. I'll send you the link on YouTube, uh, on, uh, which you use to view the videos on YouTube at a later stage. Bye-bye.